I'm Dr. Tim Joshin and we're going to talk about hair transplants today and great. And so um, one of the forms of transplantation that we do in our office is follicular unit transplantation. Now most of the time what we're doing here in our office is we're doing strip grafting. And what that means is we take a strip from the back of the head and we cut it into little pieces. But we'll talk a little bit more about this as we go along. I'm going to do mine, switching that for me. Okay. Okay, so what is a uh, follicular, follicular unit? Um, our hairs grow in bundles. They can either come as a single hair, they can come as multiple hairs. You know, you can have twos, you can have threes, sometimes you'll have clusters of fours, fives even. So this is a follicular unit. And so with follicular unit extraction, let's go on, yeah, we're gonna cut, skip that. So we talked about what a follicular unit is. And you can see here, um, the, it, this is in the scalp. After we harvested it, you can see how they grow. But here you can see there's um, one hair, and you can see here they're growing two hairs, and you can see that there's three growing out of here, and sometimes there's a cluster of four. So when we do the strip grafting, go back. When we do the strip, strip grafting, what we'll do is we'll cut out a piece of skin here, and then we'll cut these into um, individual hairs. And sometimes if there's a cluster four, we'll cut them into um, individual hairs. And the reason we want to do this is there are certain areas on the scalp where we're going to use single hairs, and then um, that's going to be the front of the scalp. And then as we go further back, we'll want to do clusters of two. And then when you get back, you want to do the, the, uh, um, the graphs that are higher cluster numbers. Okay, so where's the donor site? Um, the, for strip grafting, it's from the back of the hair. And the reason we use the, um, the hair from back here is that if you notice, even bald men, typically they're going to still have a horseshoe uh, strip of hair on the back. And that's because these hairs back here are resistant to um, testosterone. And so these are not going to fall out ever. So that's why we want to harvest them. Okay, go ahead next. So these are the, what we do when we look at a man is we want to <clears throat> look at um, what, how, how aggressive his hair loss is. So you can see with type one, there's really just a little bit of recession here. With type two, you're starting to get more major recession here. Um, type three, it's getting even worse. And then um, type three, you can also, instead of losing it from the front, you can lose the hair from the back in the yarmulke sort of distribution. With type four, you're getting more recession in the front and oftentimes in the back because most people will have both. And then type five, you're starting to have major loss in the front and major loss in the back. Um, type six, you have a lot more loss. And then finally, when you're type seven, all you have left is that horseshoe thing. And the important thing when you're doing hair restoration is to keep in mind at what age the person is and the extent of their hair loss. So a 20-year-old who's in this category here, he's got major recession, he's in his 20s. Where do you think he's gonna go? He's gonna go down here, and he's gonna be the horseshoe guy in, in not a lot of time. So if you, try to, if, you, if you were to go with a 20-year-old who has this kind of recession, and you harvest this hair that's gonna stay around, we can put it in here, we wanna fill in this area here, because he doesn't have a lot of money, so we're not gonna fill here, we're just gonna fill in this area. What's gonna happen to him? In, in 15 years when he loses all that hair. He's going to have this island of hair here and here with nothing else. So it's going to, is that going to look natural? No. Probably not. So in those people, you want to be mindful on where they may go because it's common to maintain a frontal forelock right here. This area here, oftentimes, even in bald men, they'll have a clump of hair right here. Yeah. Have you ever seen that? So in a 20-year-old, if we want to try to make a natural hairline design, what we'd want to do is we'd want to, the guy is really aggressive. He's tried um, oral medications that hasn't worked. You know, he's just really stressed out and he really wants his treatment. We're still going to try to discourage him. But nonetheless, we would be, I would feel comfortable transplanting hair here that will give him that fullness because, you know, if you look at even me, I, I have a pretty thick head of hair. And ever since I was young, I've had this temporal recession. So we don't necessarily need to improve this, but if we get this going, he's going to have a natural hairline. So um, how do we harvest the donor hairs? 
So what we do is, I talked about this, what we'll do is we'll numb up the back of this horseshoe area that's resistant to um, uh, hair loss and we'll cut a strip out here. And then with follicular unit transplantation, what we do is we just take out the, the follicular clusters and we, we just pop them out, okay? And then um, what is follicular unit extraction? We just looked at that, where we go in and we take a punch and then we punch down into the hair. And um, the, the thing that's a little bit tricky about this, the one thing that makes this less ideal than doing the strip grafting is the fact that when you do this punch, you see how you've got to get this whole hair follicle. Because if you don't get the bulb and the sebaceous gland with what we call the um, stem cells here, you, you may actually, if you transect this, that hair's not going to be, um, we're not going to be able to use that because those hair follicles are not going to survive. <laughs> and so the transection rate when you do this can be as high as 30%. So you may only get 70%. Whereas if you do the strip grafting, you're going to get a 90% um, survival rate of these, these follicles. Okay, so the advantages for people that um, want to have the FUE are if you're going to wear your hair really short, uh, you're not going to have a visible scar. Um, you, if you have a really tight scalp, you can't, um, you know, somebody who's had three hair transplantations, the more you, 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 of the scalp you take out, guess what, the tighter it gets. And so the less likely you are to have a beautiful scar. Um, if you only need a few grafts, you don't have to take a whole strip, you could just pop out a couple. You know, for example, if somebody wanted an eyebrow transplantation, we'd only need a few. Or if they just had a scar that they wanted to fill in, we could just take a small number of grafts. Um, you have faster healing time and potentially less pain because you don't have the sutures in place. The disadvantage of this are it takes a lot more time. When we do this, this will take us hours and hours and hours, whereas with the strip grafting, it takes us half an hour to harvest a strip and a couple hours to cut the uh, strip into little pieces. Um, go ahead, next. So here you can see this is the difference. So if you're a military person and you want to wear your hair tight and short, um, this is what the scar is going to look like if you do the strip grafting potentially. Now this is a horrendous scar. You know, 90% of people are going to have a much better scar than that. So it's not going to be that noticeable. But, you know, there's always that 10% of people who um, aren't going to heal well. You know, they, the, the, I was just at a conference and the surgeon said, well, you know, I do the cutting, but you do the healing. And so there is always that factor. So you can be the best surgeon in the world and you can still end up with not the perfect scar if the person isn't a perfect healer. So go ahead. So the SAFE system, this is a system we use and it's just a, a mechanical vibrating device that helps to harvest the hairs and we're really not going to talk about that today. So this is what it looks like, go, go back. This is what the SAFE system looks like and it's just this rotating thing and the idea is it doesn't um, go really fast and hard, it vibrates and so it sort of scoots along the hair follicle so you don't have as high of a risk of cutting it. So instead of like chopping the meat with a uh, cleaver, you know, where you know you're going to go through right away, this sort of vibrates through so it's less likely to damage the hair follicles. Okay, um, and the nice thing about the, this is because it's an elect, um, it's a motorized device, you can harvest hair at a faster rate. So we're really talking about the art of hair restoration and <clears throat> this is why today hair transplantation is so amazing. Because back in the old days, did, have you ever seen guys who had the plugs? You know, and what do they look like? They look like a doll's head, right? Like a bad Barbie. And um, so they're very noticeable. They don't make you look more attractive. And this is why cosmetic surgery today is so great because people can look natural. And you know, when people say, I've never seen a good hair transplant, guess what? That's because you don't notice good hair transplant. It's the same thing when people say, oh, I, you know, I never have seen a good boob job or I've never seen a good facelift. You know, you're not noticing the good ones, right? So. So it's really important to have a, be a beautiful hairline design. And so um, some of the key points are, first of all, you want to make sure that you're going to get the right amount of density. So, you know, a totally bald guy like this, you know, this may not be the best option for him if he's this bald. Now, because we want to have enough density so that it looks natural. But let's say that he's got a little bit of hair here and he wants to have a good hairline. Now, hairline is going to vary based on race. So, you know, Caucasians, if you look at most Caucasian men, they're going to have a little recession, temporal recession here. Uh, Lee Irwin has it. I have it. Are there any other Caucasian guys here? That's where it. 
So, um, but now if we now if we turn to some of our um, Hispanic staff, if you look at the guys like David, look at how straight his hairline is. Look at Jose; his hairline is really straight. Um, you know, straight across hairlines. Um, and African Americans oftentimes will have the straight across hairline as well. So you really want to look at ethnic variation. So when I have Caucasian men that want to get the straight hairline, I'm like, you know, that's not really what you're typically going to see in a Caucasian male. So that may not be what we want to do for you. So we may want to leave a little bit more of a recession here. So that's the first factor. The second factor is if you look at everyone in the room, there really aren't a lot of people that are going to have a straight hairline like Lawrence does because he shaves his that way. But typically you're going to see some 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 jagged um, jaggedness to the hair and some people will actually have a widow widow's peak like um, um, Angela, Angela. <laughs> this beautiful young woman over here so Angela has the widow's peak and you know if we look around you, you'll see that and actually with women oftentimes we'll have a couple mounds here so they'll have a widow's peak and then they'll have mounds here so it's important to, to take this into mind to keep this in mind um, and not do just a straight hairline because it's not going to look natural it's going to look very fake and it's going to be very uh, easy to identify. Okay, so you can see here differences in hairline. Jamie Foxx, he's got a straight hairline here, ethnic variation. Jude Law, you know, he's got the temporal recession. And then here, he may have had a hair transplant where he softened this up, but he kept a little bit of temporal recession. So he still looks natural, but um, it has improved a little bit. And then here's one, and you can see, this one does not look natural. And the problem with this is a couple things. First of all, the, they're, they did clusters of hairs here instead of putting in single hairs, number one. And number two, it's too straight of a hairline. And so it looks like sort of a beanie, and then you've got this straightness here. And so, you know, that's not a good hairline. Now, what we could do is if we wanted to, we could go back and we could put a jagged single hairs here and it would give a much more natural hairline and then the other thing that's important is there's a temporal tuft here that if we filled this in that would also give a much more natural appearance because young people always well most young people tend to have a little bit of a forward projection of their hair this way where it, it um, extends out in, in a peak whereas as you get older a lot of times that'll recess and that gives a lot of aging to, to the hair as well hairline as well and so you can see here, he's got his temporal tuft. He's got a nice, a um, little bit of recession here, but fullness everywhere. Okay, next. And here, this guy's hair looks pretty, pretty good. I mean, I think it could be a little bit more jagged, uh, but it's still got a little bit of jag to it, so it looks good. And then again, here you can see this guy's got a very jagged hairline. He's got the two mounds, and then he's got a, a peak there as well. So another important factor in hair transplantation is the angle of the hair. And um, you know, if you, if you plant the hair straight up, it's never gonna look natural. So a big factor is to get a, a pretty good angle at the hair. And I forget the exact percentage, but you, the lower you go, the better it's gonna look. And the other thing that happens is if you angle the hair, you're gonna have, um, it's gonna look much more dense because you're not gonna be able to see through it either. And most people like me, you can see my hair grows forward pretty dramatically. And then on the sides, it goes, grows almost straight down. And then if you look at my, the, the back here, you can see it has a Romolina. Is that right? Romolino. What's that? Romolino. Romolino. So that's the swirl pattern. So what's going on in order to get this cowlick is the hairs lay down almost flat in, in a circle, circular pattern like this. So when we're doing the back of the hair, it's really important to identify that. There's a guy, Zeering, who claims it as a zone, but he claims a lot of things as a zone. Um, and in, in terms of designing, you know, recreating this Romolino, or, or uh, cowlick, as, as we call it in Michigan. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> yes. And so with this, it's really important to identify that. And you know, fortunately, most people, when you, when you do hair transplantation, they are going to have a couple hairs that will guide you on this, and so you're going to know. So you're trying to recreate the pattern that they already have. And the thing that's interesting is there are actual studies to show that you know, some people have one cowlick, and some will have it on the right, and some will have it on the left, some will have double cowlicks. Some people have cowlicks in the front of their hair. I think, Jose, you have some cowlicks in the front, don't you? Yeah, they kind of swirl in the front. So we want to follow that. So direction of growth is huge. And as I was saying, you know, you have a low angle here for most of the most of, most hairs. Okay, go ahead. 
and Y contour. And you all should know that because, you know, board certified dermatologists, dermatologists are the people that invented the um, uh, hair transplantation. Um, board certified dermatologist, um, teach at USC, all those great things. Okay, are you guys ready for your test? Why do they call it Cali? Because it looks like a Cali. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Typically, oh, that's a very good question. How long does it take for the hair to grow after a hair transplantation? Well, there's a period of time where after you put the hairs in, um, you can traumatize the hairs and so you can get the shock loss from the surrounding hairs that were there. So those hairs may fall out. So it's about one to three months for the hairs to take root, then they'll fall out, and then they'll start to regrow. So it's about six months to a year before you actually see hairs. Yeah. Yes. No, not at all. Okay, and it's sort of like, you know, when you, when you re see, yeah, when you re see, it, it's nowhere near. You need six months to a year. So, you know, when people start getting frustrated early on, it's sort of like when you're reseeding your grass in the, is it in the spring or in the winter? You know, in the fall, they close the golf courses for how long? Three, four weeks? Because why? You're not going to see the grass for a while. And so people need to realize when you transplant hairs, it's going to be six months before you see it. And we've had people that have been really impatient about that, even in spite of LaRue telling that this does take a while.